This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring your discussion on India's journey to 5G and the forays into 6G. The participants are Parmeshwaran Narayan Ayer, former principal advisor at Troy, and Ashwini Shivastav, journalist. India is all set to connect all parts of the country with 5G telecom technology. Not only this, plans are afoot to foray into ambitious 6G technology plans. In this context, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had on Tuesday talked about India's transition from 3G to 4G and now to 5G and soon 6G while addressing silver jubilee event of telecom regulator tri that is telecom regulatory authority of india he talked about benefits of 5G and 6G technology and said that 5G technology is going to bring positive changes in the governance of the country ease of living and ease of doing business can you please explain about the 5G technology in nutshell what is it all about and what can people or the regular telecom user can expect out of it The mobile technology started with 1G. G stands for the generation. First generation was the analog. Right. Second generation onward, the 2G technology, then 3G, then 4G, 5G, and next is going to be the 6G. If we look at that, the 2G technology was primarily based on the voice and the SMS, and the data speeds we were talking at, we were talking of about 64 kbps, kilobits per second data. That is the speed that which with data speed that we could get in 6G. When it came to 3G, the third generation, the shift started going from voice to the data. Now in 3G, we are talking about data speeds of about 2 Mbps, 2 megabits per second, and it could go in advanced technologies of 3G up to 8 Mbps. Then comes the 4G technology. There the data speeds we talk about 20 Mbps. That's the current one what we are using. It could go up to 50 Mbps maximum. So here the videos and all these things started coming up in the 4G. Now when we go to 5G, we are talking of speeds in terms of 10 gigabits per second. And when in the 5G, the whole concept is that it is moving away. So far, it is again person to person. It is going to the Internet of Things, where the things around you are going to get connected onto the whole thing. It could be. smart meters for a very simple example that i can give you of 5g the application could be that the electricity or gas or all these meters nobody need to come to your home to take the reading the meter reading could automatically go to the company or farmer could be using drones to fly over his orchards to get the data about all that sitting in a remote place and so on and so forth in fact if up to 4g it is for human i mean one to one 5g is for business you could say for the applications internet of things that is putting in nutshell now okay. when you go to 6g from 5g to 6g we are talking about that speeds of 200 gigabits per second and there we are going to be connecting the world like the massive artificial intelligence then virtual reality all this will come into the place there in 6g in fact fuse the physical human and digital world into together it will become much more intelligent that's what the 6g is conceived okay. this is how the transition right from the 1g to 6g in the case of mobile technology comes and well let us remember that all this has happened in the matter of 25 to 30 years this is very short span companies are gearing up to launch 5g over the next few months do you see that really happening maybe later part of this year or when should we expect 5g roll out across the country 5G across the country would be at all the thing, but at least it would start rolling by the end of the year. If the as planned by the government and the spectrum auctions takes place and the network starts deploying, I think we should be in a position to start the network in the country towards the last quarter of this year. And from there, it will be slowly deployed across the country. See, geographically covering the entire country would be a huge, huge task. But population-wise, a good percentage of that will be the first mistake. there are apprehension in the minds of some people that on the other hand there are parts of the country which do not have mobile access or access to the network and on the other side we are going to launch higher platforms i mean we are going for higher technological advancement how far that is justified and do you agree with such apprehension that effort should be put on to connect each and every part of the country first with that technology later we can look for its advancement i think to separate issues one is extending the connectivity to the remotest part of the country because ours is a big country geographically quite distinct and uh, it has got its own challenges in many places 
to extend the connectivity. But let me put it this way, government is taking all the steps in that direction also. In right. fact, the Honorable Prime Minister did mention in his speech that how we are trying to connect to the villages and far flung places and bring them on to the whole ecosystem. Now, this is not one at the expense of the other. But if we do that, we will fall far behind. They both can go simultaneously. One need not be at the expense of the others. One is that definitely, yes, connecting the far flung areas, that is also, and that is the priority of the government. That they are doing. At the same time, we should advance in the technological trend. Otherwise, we will be falling behind the rest of the world. Today, it's a global village. So we can't afford to be lagging behind other countries. In fact, this is a good opportunity for us to come and be a leader in the world. And that is where the government is trying. They're putting all their things, uh, develop a test bed here and develop indigenous technology under the program so that we could be the leaders in this. And we can be because unlike uh, the earlier 2G, 3G and all that, here the 5G is going to be more software oriented. So here we can definitely take an edge. And again, unlike other technologies in 5G, bits and pieces can be done by different people. Not that everything will be done by one vendor. So these are all the areas where as a country we have definitely the edge. We have good software minds. People are available. That is why the government is putting all these efforts in this. And I think one should not be one or the other. It should be both. And it is being done. I would like to quote few assertions made by Prime Minister. He said that the rollout of 5G technology will boost growth in agriculture, health, education, infrastructure and logistics. Connectivity will decide the progress of the country in the 21st century and so modern day infrastructure needs to be rolled out. The Prime Minister had said very important thing that he had pointed out. He also mentioned that a task force has started work on rolling out of the 6G network by the end of the decade, he said. Yes. Specifically, he meant India is targeting the rollout of 6G telecom network, which he said will provide ultra high speed internet connectivity by the end of this decade. So we should hope that it will be rolled out by the end of this decade. No, a work in progress, as he said. Probably this is one of the first time that as a country, we are setting up task forces to work on a technology which is yet to come. That's what a country which wants to take the leadership should do. There are task forces, I am aware of, that has been set up by the Department of Telecommunications. There are various task forces and even some of them are chaired by the Secretary himself. So, there is a very senior level task forces are set up because whole ecosystem that we are talking of. And we are capable of delivering in that. So, we have come to a stage where we have to take the leadership and all these pieces put together. You see, the Atmanarabhar Abhayar. So, this is a major this thing, initiative, where we want to make the things ourselves. Earlier, we were all importing the things. This made it the thing. For we, we have our equipment now, which is being deployed by BSNL. Now, in 5G, definitely, you see, with the kind of testbed that we have deployed, the government has spent a lot of money in setting up state-of-the-art 5G testbed facility using the premier institutions, all the major IIT, the institutions, the Institute of Science, IIT Madras, Bombay, Kanpur, Delhi, Hyderabad, and Samir and all that. They have set up this facility. This will be a huge boost for the startups and other Indian industry to develop products for 5G. Because once you develop a product, you have to test it. Earlier, our products were being tested outside our country. We didn't have Absolutely. any test for it. That too, one is the money that is involved. Another is that he should allow you to test it. If we think that you are a computer to them, he may not allow you to test it. Then how do you say that my product conforms? There are so many products in the whole ecosystem. It's the base stations are there, the equipment user nodes are there, the various softwares and hardware, everything is there. And as I mentioned earlier, 5G is going to be a group of all these. It will not be done by one company entirely. You said there will be a lot of Internet of Things, IoT applications. So all this has to be tested before we go and say that there's a product here. How do we test it? So do we have the necessary infrastructure for its rolling out? Absolutely. Like once the test bed is there and people are testing the products, a lot of people are already working and in connection with the same this thing, last couple of days there was an exhibition in the Department of Telecom Sanchar Bhavan where various vendors are exhibited a number of products. So it's quite promising and the contribution by the people of our country whether it is outside or this thing is very significant. One knows that. So there is no reason why they cannot replicate it here. During the Tuesday's event, Prime Minister's 
said that it is estimated that the 5G network rollout will add USD 450 billion to the Indian economy. That's something huge, 450 billion. And this is not just increasing internet speed, but also the pace of development creating jobs. He has insisted especially how do you feel that this 5g rollout or maybe the 6g when we are supposed to do it at the end of the decade is going to help the economy if you look at that the role that the communication facilities plays in the whole economy is significant just look at the data consumption we are one of the countries which is consuming the highest data it is almost virtually like 14 gb data per subscriber per month this is the kind of data that we are consuming and which was just about 2014 3 gb per year around that and another thing is whether in rural or urban how people have adopted to this technology very well we know that today how effectively mobile data is being used by the people across the country, whether even they may be semi-literate, still they are using it. So the way the people have adopted the technology and all the digital schemes of the government where the payments are going directly to the people and all that. So people are all on to the technologies. Once we give them the technology and enable them, there's no reason why we cannot achieve the kind of figures that the Honorable Prime Minister has mentioned. Right. I think it is 100% available and they are possible so that we should enable them to do that. In fact, when the mobile came into the country, there was always an apprehension how the people in the rural areas will adopt the technology, whether it's the mobile or the digital or the use of internet. But the time has proved that though probably they are better adopting, they are faster in adopting these technologies, if I may say in a lighter way, than the urban people. The population could be converted to the strength of the country and if you give them the communication facility that we are talking of, the country can just transform itself. You talked about 5G testbed, sir, during our interaction. And yes. as you correctly pointed out that it will enable startups and industry players to test and validate their products locally and reduce dependence on foreign facilities. This testbed, which was inaugurated by the Prime Minister on Tuesday, has been set up at a cost of around 220 crore. Do you feel, sir, yes. there is a need to have more testbed? I mean, these would be operating at five different locations. Do you feel there is a need to have more? Actually, it's one testbed which is spread across all these. The most important thing is there that the government took the plunge and invested something like 220 crore rupees. And who has come to prepare that? The best technical brains in the country. All the premier IITs have come together. I don't know of any other project where all these people have come together, all the IITs, Indian Institute of Science, and everybody have come together to develop this project. This is a joint project. Now the thing is, any entrepreneur, the first and foremost thing that will come to the mind that if I develop something, where do I test? Every individual cannot have a testing facility because the testing has to be done in the whole ecosystem. This may be a very small product. How do you test that your mind works? Because unless I have the testing facility of the whole ecosystem, where do I test it? That is where it comes in handy. The more people will become entrepreneurs, develop products, come into this, test it, and then if this country makes products, this can be sold across the world. And if you say that this is the product tested, tested in the set, but these are the test results, you look at this. So we become a country which can export these things. Not only use it, export these kind of technologies outside the country. That is very important. But you have the question is absolutely correct. The test bed will need to be improved and built upon. I'm sure our, our institutes are quite capable. And uh, it is the people who are passing out from these institutes which go abroad and create this. So they will definitely able to do that given the right environment, this is the right environment. So on the one hand, we are going for technological advancement in terms of 5G and 6G rollout. Do you feel that there is a need to have some sort of literacy? If there is something which is useful to the people, of course, it, they have to be assisted in this thing. But people would take the initiative to learn it. One, one need not force it upon them. That's Once right. they find that like there's a technology which is going to help them and they need it, they would take the initiative, then it will be easier for the government or other agencies to impart the training to them. And also let us put it this way that there is a change which is not happening in only in one thing. We have a national education policy, which is the new one, which has 2020, which has just come in. It's a skilling program of the government. So all these two will be put together in one this thing and seen. All are going to help each other. They are all complementing each other. So that way, as a complete package, if you see, yes. But the most important thing is that, you can see, the communication today has become one of the vital necessities in the life. And the people adapting to these things, the moment they know that this is going to be help them improve their own lives, people themselves will take the initiative and come forward. Thank you so much for talking to us and explaining the nuances of 5G and 6G rollout. 
Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on India's journey to 5G and forays into 6G. The participants were Parmeshwaran Narayan Ayer, former principal advisor at Troy, and Dashwani Shivastav, journalist. This program is produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsgtalks@gmail.com.